Hi, this is Klaus Hermann from farbspielphoto.com and in this episode of Hands-on Photo Tips I'm going to show you an advanced method for distortion correction in Photoshop. We're going to turn this photo into this photo. Let's go! Okay, so here we are in Photoshop CS6. The image is already opened. Um, just for a second ignore that we have blown out highlights and other issues with this image. This is not really relevant for this tutorial. This is just about the distortion of this image. As you see, um, this is obviously crooked, so um, it's, uh, it's leaning towards the right. Um, and you may think that a simple um, rotation would solve this problem, but the distortion is actually more complex um, because the sensor plane of the camera was not really parallel to that wall you see there. Um, when I took this image, the, the right side of the wall here was closer to the camera than this side, the left side of the wall. Um, so a simple rotation won't solve this problem. Um, if you look at the lines that you have up here, for example, and you take the, the line uh, tool, you see in that little black box appearing there yeah, that you have an angle of zero, minus 0 0.5 degrees. If you do the same thing down here at the basement, for example, you see that you have a, um, an angle of minus 1.2 degrees. So the image is actually opening up towards the right. So let me just quickly remove these two layers here. So how do we, how do we solve this? Um, the first thing that we're going to do is activate the rulers. Now I, I have these rulers already activated. If you don't, uh, you can go to the view menu and then just click that um, rulers item here or simply use control or command R to activate them. The reason why do we do that is that we can simply um, click on that ruler and draw a guide into the image and we use these guides to as an orientation to see if our image is really straight. Um, so create a few guides along the lines in the image that we want to um, straighten. It doesn't have to be perfect. It, it cannot be perfect at this point because obviously the crooked image has no straight lines. But we will use these lines later on to just, to just verify whether um, the distortion we apply is actually solving the problem. The second thing wh that we're going to do is we make a, back, um, a copy of the background layer. So I, I'm hitting um, Control J or Command J on the Mac to create a new layer on which we're going to apply the distortion. We just switch off the background layer um, so that we see what we're doing here. Um, and the next thing that we're going to do is use the transformation tools. You'll find them under the Edit menu transform and then you have a few items here in this menu and the first thing that we're going to do is actually uh, do a bit of a rotation correction. So you see this bounding box um, around the image appear and you can go to the corners with your mouse click on one of those corners and drag your mouse just to rotate the image. So this will be just about the right um, kind of rotation we need for this image. We're going to press, press return or hit this, um, this mark here to apply the rotation. And you see that the line up here is already nicely straight, but at the base here we still have a crooked image. Um, now for the demonstration purposes of this tutorial I'm going to make another copy of this layer. You don't need to do that um, uh, if you're correcting an image, but I'm just going to do it because I want to demonstrate the, um, the different effects after I applied them. Um, so the next step would be another kind of distortion correction. We again use the edit menu and the transform item here. And this time we activate the distort tool. The distort tool again opens up such a rectangular box around the image with some handles here in the, at the, in the corners and on the edges. 
and you can use these um, handles to drag out the corners of the image and to distort the image. So put your mouse over one of those handles and um, press the shift key and the control or the command key on the Mac at the same time. What this does is by pressing the shift key you ensure that your uh, movement, your distortion will only be in, in horizontal or in vertical direction. So you lock the, the direction of the distortion and the control key ensures that you're not going to be snapping to any of the guides or uh, the, the borders of the image. So I'm clicking on this handle and I'm dra dragging it out to the bottom and while I'm doing this I'm keeping an eye on this uh, guide and on the line in the image to see if it's straightened. I'm doing the same thing at the top here. I still have the shift and the control key pressed um, and I'm doing this until the lines in the image are just about parallel to these guides. Of co obviously the image moves uh, relative to the guides so if you need some additional um, control you can go ahead and drag a new guide onto the image. Also in these corners you see that the lines have moved and to see if the distortion really worked we're going to just drag on a few more guides here also for these horizontal structures on the windows. Now keep in mind that this is a really old building so um, obviously there are going to be pieces that are not straight just plainly because the Romans built it that way or you know time passed by and erosion took place. I'm going to drag this corner out a little bit just to straighten the, the vertical lines a bit more and um, maybe up here drag it a little bit inwards so that the top line here is straightened. It's not going to be perfect but we're getting there. Let me just zoom out a bit here. Use this handle, drag it inwards. Okay, so that just looks fine to me. So I'm going to press return to apply the distortion. Um, and at this point I'm going to get rid of the of the guides. So just go to the view menu and click on clear guides um, and this is the before and after so we already managed to correct the distortion just using the, the rotation tool and the distort tool okay as a result of using these two tools um, you now see that um, we have some of the transparent background shining through at the on the edges. Let me just switch off this layer here so you can see it better. Um, the edges are not straight anymore so it doesn't fit into the frame. We have the background shining through and we're just going to cure that by using the crop tool. Now um, note that I'm using the classic mode here in CS6 because I just uh, it suits my need, needs better so it may be it may look a bit different when you uh, are using this um, just grab these handles pull the edges um, to the inside so that the um, transparent background doesn't show through anymore on all the four um, edges the top seems okay the left so if if you have this effect that the Oops, sorry, that the crop box snaps to the edge of the image, just press the control or the command key um, on your keyboard and uh, the snapping is turned off. At the bottom the same, so we bring all the borders inside so that the background, or that the, the edges are cleaned. Now one thing you would like to uh, watch out for this image is these lines at the bottom. So if I drag a guide into the image you see that this line meets the edge of the frame here while here 
this, this point where the line meets the edge is a bit further down. To make this symmetrical, just drag in the left side of the box so that it meets both lines meet the edge of the frame on the left and on the right at the same height. Hit return to apply the crop and we have a corrected image. Okay, so there's one final little thing that I would like to show you. If you look at the image right now, you see that the central element here, the telescope stand, is not at the very center of the image. So it's not symmetrical, not perfectly symmetrical. Now we're splitting hairs here, of course. Um, but if you like to do it perfectly, this is, may not be the point where you want to stop. So let me just quickly make another copy of this layer. And let me show you how you can fix that. And we're going to use the Puppet Warp tool to do that. And first, we're going to apply a few guides here to both edges and to the actual center of the telescope stand here. And one horizontal guide that we're just going to use to make sure that the movement that we're going to execute right now um, is going to be in horizontal direction only and is the, the, the elements that we're going to move are not shifted up or down. Okay, so now start the Puppet Warp tool. You'll find it under the Edit menu and Puppet Warp. And you see that the mouse, the mouse pointer is this little pin with a plus. So now you can add anchor points. First of all, set the density to more points because we need a bit more dense grid here. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to click on that guide to pin the left and the right side of the image. We're doing that because we don't want this part to move. This is, um, this is where the, the image is actually pinned to the background, so to speak. And you will see the effect shortly. Okay, so we have pinned the right and the left side. And now we're going to the, to the center uh, guide that we've drawn. We make a first pin here. And you see that this little white dot in the pin, this indicates that this pin is selected. And now we're going to draw a number of pins along this vertical center line here. And to have all of these sel being selected, we just press and hold the shift key. So hold the shift key and then click on that center guideline. This guide is important because um, we don't have to click exactly on the same line or the, uh, these anchor points snap to this guideline. You also see that I have one point here right at the middle at the on the horizontal line, uh, which we can use to verify that uh, the movement doesn't go up and down, but only left to right. Okay, so the next thing we will do is add adi an additional guide and let that guide snap to the center of the image. So this new guide marks the position where we want this telescope stand to be. Now only click and hold on one of these points and drag it to this new guideline. The points will snap to this guide and you see that now the telescope stand is right in the center of the image. All the other parts of the image have been distorted slightly to make this move possible. The right and the left edges remained in the exact same position where they were. If we would have left away these or uh, these anchor points at the left or at the right, um, the whole image would have moved. So that's the reason why we pinned the right and the left side. Okay, just click on the mark here to apply the distortion and we're done. Clear the guides in the view menu and now you can verify the effects of the image, of the distortions that we applied. So this is the before, this is the after. The first step was just a rotation 
The second step was a distortion to, to uh, straighten all the horizontal lines. And the final step was a bit of puppet warp to center the telescope stand. So this completes our tutorial on advanced distortion correction. I hope you found it useful. See you next time. Bye bye. Thank you.